Once again, for those of you who are joining us, we're in our Commonwealth Community Impact Series, and we have with us two organizations that are on the ground doing the work in the community. We have none other than Community First, Guns Down, and Rec League here to talk about their efforts and initiatives here in the city of Norfolk and what's coming up on July 27th. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric LaVille. We'll be right back in just a moment. Welcome back. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric LaVille. As always, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this Sunday. Hopefully, you know, you're getting a little relief from the heat, but thank God for it. And we got a little rain, so it's cooling off. Hopefully, you're staying safe and enjoying your summer. Summer's just about over here at Norfolk State. We're getting ready for our new semester. So all the new freshmen that are coming in, the new Spartans, again, congratulations. You're getting ready to start in your journey to be a mighty Spartan. And as always, we'd like to thank the listeners, the Spartan Nation, the greatest supporters out there, because we couldn't do what we do unless we have you. So, you know, during the summer, we love to take a look at organizations and people who are in our communities doing the work on the ground. Now, throughout the year, we talk politics. We have our individuals from our state, federal level, and also our city council to talk about things that they're doing, policies that they're making, laws that have been passed, and why it's important to get out and vote. But we also like to talk to individuals who are in the community doing work through their foundations and through their nonprofits or just out there making a difference. Because here you understand that we believe that policy is best made from the ground up than the top down. So with us, we have in studio, none other than two incredible gentlemen here in the city of Norfolk that are making a difference in their community. We have Mr. Anthony Clary from Rec League and also Clay Marquez from Gunsdale, also known as the collaborative effort of Community First. Welcome to Say the Water, gentlemen. How are you this morning? Good, good. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, you know, I want to get right into it because when we talk about, you know, community efforts, we talk about examples in the community and really speaking to issues and on the ground doing the work. Your organization was featured on one of our local stations here, 13 News Now. You're actually doing it. So I, I, first I want to start with, with Rec League. Brother Clary, tell us a little bit about yourself, Rec League, and why did you start it? Um, I started Rec League and officially in 2014, 2014 after losing a young uh, family member to gun violence. Mm. Prior to that, I would say around 2009, I, I started a program, or should I say programs, when I would come back home between, you know, D.C. and Norfolk right. on the weekends to do things at the rec center. Okay. So previous to that, the basketball court was knocked down, and that was one of the spots where we spent a lot of time at. So just seeing right. the individuals on the stoop. Uh, every weekend, every day, and just not really doing much. I said, you know what, let's, let's have a basketball camp, let's have a basketball tournament. Uh-huh. Invited some guys from Huntersville, invited some guys from Tower to Park and some other areas. Uh-huh. And we had about 40, 45 kids. And this was just my first event. I was, I was, I was home. Wow. And from there, I had some people to talk to them, had some of the older guys that kind of yeah. speak to some of the issues that was going on. I fed them. We had a, a tournament. We gave out some 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 trophies, and it just kind of turned into me wanting to do more of that type of stuff because I, I noticed during that time period, that four or five hour time where I was involved with them, they it, these was this was right. the demographic of individuals who were out doing other stuff during the night, and it's like you know what if we do more of this, we can kind of keep the guys a- activated, active, and, and and not doing stuff that'll get them potentially locked up or potentially killed. So it it, it was just a a, a a light bulb moment to see what I can do to help the community. Now you said coming from DC, <clears throat> so coming all the way down, are you now permanently here? And, and why? Yeah, so, and, and and why Norfolk? No, so I'm actually from Norfolk. Okay. I actually moved to DC, and should I say I was back and forth to DC between Norfolk and DC between 2002 and 2007, just you know trying to find my way, uh, entrepreneur uh, right. businesses, and just running back and forth. You know, so I always would make it a point to come back mm-hmm. and just do things in the community. Right. And one of the things that I found that I enjoyed was just, you know, just being a mentor and just, yeah. you know, seeing the young guys go a certain way and being able to say, you know what, you can do it better. You can do it this way. You can do it a little bit better than we did it. Yeah. And it just kind of turned into a habit to the point where it grew into what we call rec league today. Nice. 
Now, you mentioned the impact of losing, you know, a family member mm-hmm. to gun violence. Tell us about, you know, how how that how that transpired and what that meant in your life. The biggest thing f- for me was seeing a when you see a 13, 14 year old, you know, uh, die because of gun violence. That's kind of and and me and his mom, you know, we like brothers and sisters. We actually cousins, but we like brothers and sisters. So seeing his mom and the pain that she went through with losing her son yeah. and not being able to replace that 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 portion of her hurt, you know, so yeah. it was almost like I couldn't really imagine how to deal with that. So I, I always thought she was strong for mm-hmm. being able to manage that situation. So I always say you, I, I wouldn't want or wish that on anybody else. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the driving force behind why in 2014, Rec League became a formal uh, nonprofit and we mm-hmm. wanted to just do more with the young guys around, yeah. not just gun violence, but just life in general, life skills, right. and just giving them activity, giving you know, creating programs to keep them yeah. busy, you know, putting them in front of professional people, uh, or should I say, successful people, and mm-hmm. skill building, and just in general, a lot of the guys that I was getting was guys that they, you know, from the corner or from the neighborhood, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was my way of connecting to them outside of just you know, uh, uh, just standing on a on a corner, we we got to do something with that time, and that's kind of how Rec League was born. Excellent. Well, you know, we're going to get a little bit more into gotcha. the different programs of Rec League in just a moment, mm-hmm. and and you know, some success of those initiatives. Mm-hmm. But we we got another brother here, you know, someone that that also is working hand to hand with you, uh, brother Clay Marquez from Guns Down. Tell us a little bit of again about your story. Why Guns Down? Why now? But Guns Down um, came about maybe about six years ago. Um, a lot of violence was being committed out in our communities and guys that came from my era, because I wound up doing like 10 years in prison. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys that, that came with me in the streets, they weren't standing up. And I lost my son like 14 years ago to gun violence as well. Wow. And I still was on the fence, straddling the fence. So after I started seeing so much violence being committed in our communities by our own, I decided that I had to take a stand. You know, I didn't want to be one of the ones that kept complaining on the sideline. I wanted to do something about it. And by me knowing the landscape of the communities and a lot of the guys that run the communities and stuff, I felt that I could have some type of um, impact in trying to help stop the violence. So that's how Guns Down was born. And um, ever since then, you know, we would start to go out into the communities. Like when the violence would, would, would happen, we would try to, like, be more proactive than reactive. And we would go out there and talk to the young guys and, you know, just about the violence. And I would talk to them about the penitentiary and the right. prison since I've, you know, been there before and try to tell them my story a little bit so that they wouldn't make the same mistakes that I made, that, you know, they may could change their lives while they had the opportunity to, you know, instead of having to find out. Because I always used to tell them that you're going to listen to somebody. If you don't listen yeah. to me, you're going to listen to your jailer or warden or somebody, you know, you're going to listen to. So, you know, me and the guys, we just got together, you know, some like-minded guys and, you know, they wanted to do the same thing because we were losing our youth at unprecedented numbers. And then when George Floyd came about, we kind of, like, yeah. stepped up a whole, like, like tenfold, you know, and got out in the community, you know, and, like, try to get out there and help protect our community, yeah. you know, as well, and just try to be gatekeepers out there, you know, because we knew that the uh, a lot of the young guys would listen to us a lot more than they would the police department. You know, I mean, shout out to the police department, too, because we work hand-in-hand as well, but we come from them and we know them a lot better. So we we you know we felt that we could you know do a lot more out there in our own community. So then we just got to working out there and uh, we saw that it, you know it's a food desert out there and they started closing down grocery stores in our community. So we started like uh, distributing food and just holding cookouts and having peace rallies out there and just trying to you know do our part and just trying to stop the violence you know because right. we feel that although crime may be down we know that one life loss is one too many. So yeah. that's how we came about it. Absolutely. Now, again, I, there's a theme that's here, you know, loss with gun violence. You know, uh, again, speaking of Brother Clary, he mentioned his cousin, his like a brother, saw 13, 14 years old, the pain. But you just mentioned your son. Yes. You know, if you, if, if, if you want, if you can, tell us a little bit about how that actually pulled you and, and changed the way that you're you operating now. Well, I don't want no, um, nobody else to have to go through that pain because, you know, it's an old saying that say that time heal all wounds, but that's not true. You just deal with it a little bit better every day, you know, mm-hmm. the best that you can, you know, if you ever get over it. Mm-hmm. And it just motivates me more because it's still a um, crime that's unsolved, you know, and uh, it just motivates me more just to get out there so that other parents won't have to go through what I went through. You know, we lost a, a loved one. Actually, this morning, you might have heard about a shooting that took place on Little yeah. Creek Road. 
and um, I'm very close with that family there, you know, and uh, it's just very touching. It just rehashes, you know, my son's, you know, uh -huh. homicide, you know, that took place. But, you know, we just want to be out there for our community and stuff like that. And, you know, when I see the young guys out here, you know, they being buried. I go to so many funerals, they don't make sense. Now, somebody just actually called me the other day and just told me that, you know, like, talk to me about mental health, you yeah. know, that I may need a break, you know, just to try to, you know, tone down a little bit, you know, just have some time for yourself because you right. see it over and over. At some point, it, gets, it starts to bother you, but I constantly go because I don't want to become desensitized to these shootings or murders. You know, I, will, I always want to feel the pinch. Right. Yeah, and try to be there for the families as best we can. Absolutely. You know, you mentioned also George Floyd, what took place. You know, I call that the, the social justice movement of our time. You know, that murder that we saw, it was a murder that we saw mm -hmm. stream live, the world saw it. I think it opened up a, everybody's eyes at what actually takes place with our communities at the hand of uh, rogue law enforcement, at the hands of ourselves. And just like you said, you mentioned food deserts. And I mean, it just, it just brought everything to the top. It also brought mental health uh, to the top as well, which is very important. But both of you turn your, your pain into passion for a purpose, and you're moving now in changing the community. I want to come back to Rec League. You know, we were talking before uh, the, the show, and we've talked previously about, you know, the success of it. Tell us, uh, tell us about one initiative that, that you saw and the success that's coming from it. I would say my uh, most prideful initiative is my, my Brother's Keeper mentoring program, and that started actually in the Rec Center. Okay. In Young's, uh, and it transitioned to uh, two two high schools and two middle schools, um, and the, and the beauty of that program is connecting individuals who are referred, you know, from whether it's the the school system or the, or a parent who feel like they're losing touch with their kid, or mm -hmm. e I've even had uh, uh what you call them uh, caseworkers who've put it, put me in touch with families who wow. need mentors, and we just match them with males, you know, who <coughs> look like us, been yeah. through, you know, what we've been through. And we it's a it's a one on one approach and it's a group group effort um, initiative to that actual program as well. So you know over the last year that program has expanded to the point where you know I've seen some success stories. I've seen individuals. I, I met made new relationships with with guys who call, text, and I, they need something. I'm there, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of one of the I, I would say my pride and joy moments when it comes to programming and just starting programs for Rec League. Right. So with that, you know, that's amazing that you've got your initiative so successful. Like I said, you got caseworkers, you got families saying, hey, we've got somebody, we need help. You know, give us an example of one person that, mm -hmm. that came through that, and you've helped them and mm -hmm. what they're doing now. Gotcha. Well, I, I, I use the name Rob, but, but uh, this individual, when I, when I met him, me and his mom actually grew up together. Okay. Um, I'm a little older than her. Um, and she, when he was, I say about four years ago, he was not necessarily on, on the, the right path, but he was hanging with the wrong wrong crowd, in, involved with the wrong things. And even if you weren't the one doing it, if I ride in a car and we go do X, Y, and Z crime, yeah. you, you're guilty too. So that was one of the things right. that he just had a bad habit of doing, being around the wrong people, being around the wrong scenario. So um, last, last spring, or should I say this past spring, his mom saw me in the Walmart parking lot, parking lot, and came up to my car, I was in the passenger side, and then she knocked on the window. And again, we know each other, but I haven't seen her in a long time, but I see him all the time through the program. Yeah. And she just asked me to get out the car, and I got out the car, because you know, we talk, and I'm thinking she just want to talk. And she just gave me a hug. And she was like, you know, I, I appreciate everything you do for my boy. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I, when I, I know when he's not with me, he with you. And I know he's doing something positive. I know he's safe. He's graduated right now. He's about to go to uh, the Merchant Seaman. This October, wow. and he's been one of my my biggest uh, uh, count. I call him a youth counselor, but he's yeah. been one of my biggest success stories. So it's 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 just seeing the the change from an individual from when you first put your hands on them to seeing, uh -huh. look, look, you you're successful, but it's because of you. It's not because of me. Yeah. Only thing I did was just believe in you and just try to keep you in. in in, in good a good space and get, give you good direction and you did the rest so that's probably one of the the the, the greatest moments yeah. in the whole mentoring phase for me is her coming to me 
I, we probably known each other for years, and I ain't never got a hug from her. So <laughs> for, for her to come and give me a hug, because you know she she ran into me yeah. in the parking lot, and she's seen what the program has done for her son. Phenomenal. It just speaks volumes to you know why I want to continue to do what I do. It's amazing because you're just talking about spending time, mm-hmm. just spending time, and it literally changed the trajectory mm-hmm. of the young man's life. Where, like you said, he's, he was hanging out with a bad crowd, but could have ended up in a in- place he didn't want to end end up. And now he's graduated on the way for a skill, life skill. Life skill, yep. Yep, mm-hmm. and, and getting ready to make a difference in this community. And, that, and that's the important thing for me is when, he, when we sit back and we, we talk, you know, I joke. I say, you ain't, you ain't the same guy that, that, <laughs> I, that, that came through the door, you know, a couple, four years ago. Yeah. And it's funny because I didn't know who his mom was. You know, a lot of times, a lot of these young, young men, you know, they move along. They, it's, it's just different now where they can, you know, they're by themselves, they're, they're on the other, uh, other side of town. It's like, where your parents at? But right. after finding out I knew his, his mom, you know, it just kind of drove it home that, you know, the connection to the community, yeah. it, it runs deep. Absolutely. It's Stay the Water. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. Today, you're joining us for our Commonwealth Community Impact Series. We have with us two organizations that are in the community, on the ground, making a difference with troubled youth turning their lives around. We have the organization of Guns Down and also Reckley together known as Community First. You know, Brother Marquez, you know, you mentioned Guns Down and what you're working with. You say there were others that came together and you said you didn't want to stay on the sideline. Right. You wanted to step up. Tell us about how you and your group have stepped up with an initiative that's made a difference in the community. Um, well, first of all, we had a, um, a Guns Down piece up. And like a year ago, maybe like eight or nine guys, they had turned over guns to us, and uh, which could have been a, a weapon that killed one of our children. Wow. And uh, we turned it over to the Norfolk Police Department. And out, out of that, we just basically, like, <clears throat> just keep up with them guys. Yeah. You know, a few of them uh, went to Job Corps, you know, mm-hmm. and they um, are doing very well. Uh, two or three is, is at the shipyard. One is a merchant seaman. And I just keep tabs on them, you know, just yeah. make sure they're okay. So when they come back, and, um, and then I... Tell them about trade school because I'm a contractor by trade, mm-hmm. and uh, try to send on the trade. Uh, one is in trade school for H- HVAC, and uh, so just try to just you know just keep talking to the young men and just you know just keep yeah. giving them something positive, you know, and moving like that. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So again, you know, making an impact, making a difference, changing the trajectory of not just their life but the lives of their families. Correct. You know, because they're going to probably have children, have families, and now their families can look up to them. You know, you also mentioned that you work hand in hand with the police department as well. Tell us about that relationship that you have with uh, Norfolk Police Department and also the some of the elected officials. Because I heard about you, the work that you've done through a city councilwoman who we had on the show before. Tell us about that relationship and working with the police and also politicians. Well, <clears throat> when I was younger, I know how, you know, when we was going to school, we had what you call officer friendly. Right. And I know that we done gotten so far. That was way back. That was way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not telling my age, but that was a long time ago. However, um, I know that now there's a disconnect between the community and the police yeah. department. And what we do, uh, as well as rec league, you know, we, we got a working relationship with the Nova Police Department that we may do programs together, you know, okay. things of that nature, and just try to help bring that relationship back. You know, we always let the community know that, you know, it's your own fault if you don't ask questions. That's why we have events, right. and we will invite the Norfolk Police Department out as a partner as in the Urban League and other different uh, facilities as well mm-hmm. so that they can ask questions that they, that they may have, you know, like as far as something that's going on that they need to address. Like right. instead of telling us, they could ask them directly or take it down to the council. And we let them know that, you know, as a member of uh, the community, you can go down to the city council and voice your opinion and just state things because they work for us. You know, we don't work for them. So you can go down there just as well and, you know, and just put it on the record, you know, uh, what's on your mind. So we just do things out, you know, with the police department, just try to build that relationship back, you know, and just make a stronger bond. The same way that we used to have, you know, one time when we was in school, the child could go tell the teacher something right. and go tell the mom something else different. So we try to close that gap and put the mom and the teacher on the same level so we can have a conversation. And so, can I so, add something to that? Absolutely. And so one one portion to that, he's, he hit everything on the head. And the main thing for us, I think one of our main goals is we, we, we like to be proactive with mm-hmm. the community first approach. So a lot of times we 
when it, in regards to us working in the community, we want to work so people from the community aren't getting arrested for things that they can avoid. You know what I mean? So we want to prevent the police department from even having to be on scene. Right. So with us being there first or being on the ground, you can kind of help people who may be going through a tough time or may, you know, just may need you to put your arm around right. them and say, you know what, it's a different way. So for us, a relationship, in our, in our opinion, is if we do our job, you guys don't have to come out and arrest anybody. You guys don't come. You don't. You don't have to show up on scene because we want to make sure nobody, everybody's okay. Absolutely. So, and I think that's part of when we say relationship. We 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 feel we really feel mm-hmm. like we take we want to take care of our own community. So mm-hmm. the police officers don't have to come Sorry. out and and waste a call or waste a ride and and come out and address something when we can you know be a part of the community and address our own issues and and pretty much police ourselves. Absolutely. Right. Now with that, you're. You, you have relationships, like I said, you mentioned with the police department, elected officials. What about the relationships in the community? Tell us where you're operating at and how the community embraces you. Well, right now we're in the Young's Terrace community, um, but we'll go wherever we need to go. If we go across the street to Calvert as well at times. Yeah. But the community is loving us. You know, they have accepted us with open arms. You know, it's like we've been there the whole time. And, uh, and we enjoy them as well. You know, at one time, like, we was, they had something at the school, at the Young Terrace School, uh, the P P B Young and uh, the, the the teacher them invited us out the principal, and it was like the children haven't been outside to play in like over a year, two years, three and years. by the three years, and by the guys yep. being out there, you know, making sure that the children was okay because they entrusted us with the children. Is that because of the safety issue? Because safety, yeah, safety issues because of the gun violence that has been going on in the community. Yep. You know, so it gave the children the opportunity to stretch their legs and exhale a little bit and, Absolutely. you know, and just go out there and play. And, and just be kids. And be kids. Right, and just be children. That's right. You know, and, and, the, and the, uh, the singers at one point, uh, a lot of them was going down Monticello to, to go to the 7-Eleven just to buy a drink instead of just walking to the closest um, store right around the corner wow. because they was afraid to That's cut through way. the court. Yeah, a very long way. You know, and just by us being out there, you know, the, a lot of the community members are feeling back comfortable again and just yeah. giving them their community back. You know, we uh, which we are a part of it as well. And, and, I, and I think too, the big a big part of that is letting the the young youngsters know, letting the teenagers know, letting the 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 individual the, the young men know that mm-hmm. this is your community. That's so right. it's nothing special about you know Anthony that you can't Johnny you can't come out here and do the same thing for your community. You can't represent your community and support your community the same way we do. You know, we we just want to show an example. And I think a lot of the individuals out there are picking up some of the examples that we're setting, and we're seeing some things like we just witnessed some uh, some of the younger kids the other day. So we do cleanups. So we do quarterly cleanups in you know various neighborhoods. Yeah, so we had right. a cleanup event, but we go back. Um, fast forward back to last week where we mm-hmm. see some of the young guys actually picking up the trash, like going through the same route mm-hmm. that we went through with the cleanup, you know, cleanup event that we did, and I, and it, it just comes from them taking pride in your neighborhood. Right. And exactly. that's what we just want to instill. This your neighborhood. Take pride mm-hmm. in it. And they're doing that on their own. On their own. Yeah, on their own. On and, and on Thursdays when the food truck comes, yep. our brothers out there in the Blue Vest community first, they help the, the people out there, get our family get the groceries back to the house. Now you're seeing the young guys that be out there doing that time assisting as well. You know, because the food yeah. bank truck comes drop off that's food, right. yeah, and yeah. it's hard for them to get the groceries back home. Some of the people. So now the young guys out there helping as well. So they're stepping up. Absolutely. Showing the example, being the example, being the solution. That's the rec league and what guns down do. You know, you've got a very important event coming up. On the 27th, Community First, working together. It's called Victory Over Violence. Tell us a little bit about what that event is, how we can get involved with it. Um, Victory Over Violence was a brainchild of us just having a conversation with some of the, the singers in the community and, and, them, and them just expressing to us that, you know, they felt like a relief that the guys was on the ground and they felt like, you know, they hadn't been able to be uh, mobile and walk around and sit on their porch. Yeah. And a lot of times we forget that the seniors through all this gun violence in the communities become the indirectly affected by it, and they're like prisoners, prisoners in their own home. Wow. So we was talking and we was just figuring out how can we give them something that they can claim that we can support, we can bring their younger individuals and everybody together to support their cause and not let their issue go unheard. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how the, the event came about. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, no, and um, we also have another partner, um, Singers Agent Gracefully, mm-hmm. Ms. Jan Wynn. 
you know, as a partner in this as well. And we, like Ann said, for me, when we was working out um, Huntersville, yeah. it was an uh, elderly gentleman out there, and he had just paid off his home, 30 years, and he worked every day, and he, was a, he, felt he was a hostage <laughs> in his own home, and he was like, he can't even enjoy his home. You know, and he was thinking about selling it and moving. And when we talked to the community out there and some of them voiced their opinion about, you know, not having something to do, right. and we got together and said that we want to give them something, you know, that gentleman stood at the forefront, you know, and it's just something that we want to just not only take our young stars but in every community mm -hmm. and let them enjoy their golden years, you know, as they should. Absolutely. And this, and this yeah. back to what we said earlier, partnerships. Because like he stated, SAG, Singers Agent Gracefully, yeah. is our partner, is a partner in this mm -hmm. event. But also just to show the Norfolk Police Department was instrumental in just supporting us, allowing us to shut down streets and allowing us to, you know, the traffic flow and providing security. Mm -hmm. So it, it, a lot goes into doing an event like this mm -hmm. to where, as we explain, partnerships, you know, are important. And those Absolutely. things allow us to do what we do in the community and be supportive of our people. So, you know, that's pretty much what how this came about. Absolutely. So tell us, this Saturday, July 27th, Victory Over Violence, where, where is it going to be held and what's, what's going to take place? So the address is 801 Church Street, mm -hmm. um, and that's an uh, area called Purpose Park. Correct. Um, and it's... Uh, yep. very well. Yep, yep. so Purpose <laughs> Park. And what we're doing is we're, sh uh, we're shutting down portions of Virginia Beach Boulevard, Lincoln Street, uh, what's that, Bramerton, and okay. uh, what's the back street? Virginia Beach Boulevard. Virginia Beach Boulevard. And we just a allowing the seniors uh, a 2K space to walk, you know, a fun walk, and we're going to do it together with, with them. We're going to bring out the youngsters. We're going to bring the music out. We're going to have some giveaways. We're going to give away some food and just some good vendors and resources yeah. to support the senior population and just support the community. And what type of reception have you received from the community as a whole, our our city council, other representatives from the state government, and also uh, financial supporters. Yeah, um, we haven't had any um, backlash. I mean, everybody is in support of it, you know, because they know it's definitely needed. Absolutely. You know, because at one point in time, we all going to get of age. You know, we would like for somebody to come in and do the same thing for us. Absolutely. So everybody see the handwriting on the wall, and um, you know, as far as partnerships and stuff like that, we you know we are waiting. Still waiting. I don't know if we got any funding. Um, so we have uh, the link up where we're going to actually give to you where you can donate. We do have uh, Senator Graves. She's going to cut the ribbon, but she's pledged to make a donation, and she's going to okay. be on site that day right. um, to uh, – and I just talked to her today. But she's going to be on site to do the ribbon cutting. And, again, at the conclusion of this, if you want to support, you can definitely go to the link and, and, and make a donation, which will go directly to – um, the calls and also to SAG, who does a lot of free uh, things for the seniors mm -hmm. in the community. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, we only have a few moments left. And just the conversation we've had, it shows that what you're doing is making the difference on the ground. Uh, so we want to be able to support it more. So tell us, where can we find more information about you online mm -hmm. and, uh, or, or, uh, and how we can get to this event? So you can go to, for as far as Rec League, you can go to RecLeague.org. That's R-E-C-K-L-E-A-G-U-E.org. And if you want to donate uh, right now, the actual event link is on the, on the home page. So you'll see the link and just go to the donate button. And it also has more details about the event where you can, you know, get some information. But as far as uh, Guns Down and, and, and the, the, the collaboration, the actual community first page is listed on the RecLeague.org okay. page, but go, you can also tell them. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it, and um, Guns Down Movement. Yeah, so, I mean, we just working in collaboration and just try to just keep this thing going, you know, and just, you know, hope that others will follow suit, you know, and we just want to take care of our own community, you know, Absolutely. and be there for our own. Absolutely. Well, listen, we thank you for what you're doing, the job that you're doing in the community. And we're going to get that information out. Again, that's RecLeague.org, Guns Down Movement. You can go to the link on RecLeague.org, and you can click. You can donate. Volunteer, come out, make a difference in the community. Work with these two brothers that are doing the work on the ground. And we thank our political officials, uh, policymakers, for working hand-to-hand -hand police department because when we all work together, that's when we make the positive impact. And can, we, yes, can, we, can I give a shout-out to Ms. Royster for – 
you know, recognizing Absolutely. what we're doing and supporting us and, you know, uh, giving us the opportunity to be on this platform. And also, if you can't participate, or should I say, if you want to come out and participate, you can also register to come out and walk with us. The goal is to walk with the seniors and support them in solidarity. So, again, it's not just for seniors, it's for everyone. So, we're we looking forward to seeing you out there. Absolutely. And yeah. shout out to all those that are doing positive things, trying to make a difference in the community. Absolutely. That's Victor over Violence, The Walk. July 27, 27, this Saturday. Guys down directly, thank you so much for being with us. Once again, to stay the one, I'm your host, Dr. Eric Laville. Continue to listen to us. Stay engaged because when we work together, we solve solutions. Until next time, be good, be great. God bless, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Norfolk Councilwoman Danica Royster, and you're listening to State of the Water with award-winning host, Dr. Eric Clavel. 